ladies and gentlemen, welcome. Welcome to a very, very special edition of, uh, of, of Jury Saturday. So much so that I'm not even going to play the full intro song. No, 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 no. We're going to bring that one down because we have a very special guest visiting me from uh, Orlando, Florida. And we'll get into why he's here. I think it's the first time that you've... I mean, you've never been on NSFW before, have you? Uh, no, sir. So this is really an introduction to uh, the, the Diamond Club and, uh, and and Chat Realm. That's, that's uh, the, the fans that follow everything. This is my little brother, Eric Taylor Young. What's going on, everybody? There we go. Uh, so I don't know. I mean, they call me Jury, like J-R-Y. Okay. So I don't know what that would make you. That would be like, you'd be like Eddie? Eerie. Etsy? <laughs> <laughs> Something Etsy, like ladies and gentlemen. <laughs> Jerry and Etsy. Welcome. <laughs> Etsy kind of sounds like... It sounds totally feminine, like we're like fucking uh, Lucille Ball and it does. other bitch. It kind of sounds like Fibber <laughs> McGee and Molly. Like there we should go. have like an old like radio show. Like... <laughs> it's Etsy. Jerry and Etsy. <laughs> At 7 o'clock, remember everybody, tune in to Jerry and Etsy. What? <laughs> what hijinks can they possibly get into next? <laughs> uh, all right. So, uh, normally what happens on this podcast is I just talk about what's going on uh, in, in my life. I, I, it's a very self-indulgent live stream. It's, gotcha. it's really just me talking about myself and, and things that I find important. Uh, you're here to watch the Steeler game. That's correct. Tomorrow. Now, uh, this would be something that I probably would bring up uh, even if you weren't here. But since you are here, it, it makes it even more important. Uh, our mother... Gloria Young, who has, I think, mom has been on the podcast and you have not. I think I remember, it was this the time that you guys woke her up in the middle of the night? Yes. To talk about The Walking Dead? To talk about The Walking Dead. We right. called her in the middle of the night. So mom has been on the podcast. Uh, you have not. She is freaked the fuck out about us going to this game. That's correct. Why in your, if you were to explain to everybody... Uh, why mom is freaked out, what would you say? It's for one simple reason, because she's been uh, Googling clips of people getting into fights at the Oakland Raiders Coliseum. Yeah. <laughs> and just wor working herself up into a tizzy, uh, and she's totally convinced that we're going to get gang raped at this game for being Steeler fans. And now we're even seeing it in the chat room. Uh, D. Powell SJ says, uh, don't wear Steelers gear to the game. Uh, you're going to get uh, you're going to get Prison murdered. Shanks. Prison Shanks is a cow eat you. Um, you know I I, I got a hard time believing that we're going to get murdered or stabbed in the butt as uh, Omnicross Cross said. <laughs> <laughs> DP Owens Jr. Sorry. That's exactly what Gloria is mostly worried about is us. A, a good a good butt, butt stabbing. stabbing. Yeah, you know that we're just gonna get. I like the idea of a butt stabbing because it's kind of like the most cowardly stabbing you could have. Yeah. Like, it'd be like, it's like one step below a stab in the back. Yeah. Like, you stabbed <laughs> me right in the butt. And mom was really getting worked up when she was Google searching butt stabbing, too. Was, oh, my God. She Oakland Coliseum butt stabbing? She was in for a rude awakening. Okay, <laughs> MacBook Pro 17 says there's a reason why they call it the black hole. But the black hole is a specific part of that stadium. Yeah. Like, it's like, it's like the bleachers in Yankee Stadium, you know. Uh, it, it's a, like, the bleacher creatures of Yankee Stadium are not all over. It's one part. Uh, so, I, I don't know. I mean, like, I'm not worried about it. And and, and this is, by the way, and, and hopefully Mom isn't watching this, but, like, <laughs> I've she's not been the only one who's been, it was expressed to me specifically that, A, I should be worried, and, B, I should definitely not wear Steelers gear. Yeah. Like, multiple people have told me that. I'm not so sure. I mean, like, I know we're going to get yelled at. Yeah. And, I mean, that even happens when um, when we were watching games in Florida, too. Yeah. We would get yelled at. You get heckled. The only thing is that in Florida, we have no reservations about yelling back. Yes. Because th there's – Dolphin fans are, you know, they're kind of, like, fairly happy to be there. You know? <laughs> like, they're just there. They're there for a football game. Like, hey, you guys. Like, hopefully we make the playoffs. Still in denial about Marino being in retirement. So they're exactly. just a, yeah, they're they're just a very um, they're a fun bunch. Now, have you gone to Tampa? Um, oh God, yeah. Um, are, are the Tampa fans different than Miami fans? <laughs> they're non-existent. That's the that okay. was uh, the funny thing. I actually got to compare both stadiums in the same season, 
in um, in 2010. So we went to Tampa, and there was six. It was at least 65 percent Steeler fans. So yeah, uh, I mean, Tampa fans were non-existent, and even before they yelled at me. I was yelling at all of them. <laughs> sure. <laughs> so, I mean, NFL stadiums definitely exist on a gradient. There's Tampa, where you can yell first, and, and yeah. then there's Oakland, where we're going to get yelled at just like we do in Miami. We're just not going to yell back. Uh, all right. Now, Eric, you're, you're unfamiliar with doing live streams, so let me uh, introduce you to one of my favorite things. Yes. Is you get instant feedback. Of course, people can tell you whether they like what you're talking about, whether they don't like what you're talking about. Uh, one user uh, says, man, this show sucks really bad. That user Fingering my butthole. <laughs> Which, I mean, I guess if you are, in fact, right now fingering your butthole, this is not the best thing to watch. There's probably better things to watch while you're fingering your butthole, right? <laughs> I mean, Justin didn't even shave today, so he's a lot, no! he's a lot cuter and better for fingering your butthole, too, when he's clean shaven. Exactly. <laughs> also, I like the fact that we're, like, in decreasing beards. Like, like there should be some. We should have one younger brother. We should have a little Ronnie. We're gonna bring a little Ronnie onto this show. Who's just, just fresh face. So it's like slowly, like you just get more bearded with age. He's like a baby's tuckus. <laughs> it's a beard gradient. Um, now let's just say that mom is not coming out of left field with the fact that we've started trouble. Specifically, let's go back in time mm. and talk about uh, probably your most obstinate. <laughs> At a football game. Uh, I mean, it would have had to have been at the Dolphins game that we were just talking about a moment ago. Yeah. Yeah. Um, I guess I, I kind of need to set the table with the tailgate that we had that morning. <laughs> Go ahead. <laughs> because, I, I, I mean, you know, that's definitely what led to what happened. Well, th describe the tailgate. <clears throat> you know, paint a picture here for the fine people. I mean, normally when you think about a typical NFL tailgate, you're thinking like beer and burgers. But instead, at this particular tailgate... We didn't really eat. Instead, all we did was drink Patron and eat weed brownies. Yes. <laughs> weed Rice Krispie Treats. Yeah. So, uh, um, so. Which are, especially the way that our friends make them, uh, they're not like, they're old. Old people who smoke pot take shit to a level unseen through your 20s. It's, yeah, I mean, because they, they're, not, they're not messing around with, like, the, the stems and sticks and shit. They're, like, hydroponically infusing each and every fucking grain of the Rice Krispie Treat with pure THC. And it's, like, like this, this couple <laughs> that, that did it, they're older. They don't have any kids. So it's just, like, the idea of dropping $80 on weed, on weed Rice Krispie Treats <laughs> is, like, a thing. It's, like, oh, well, let's just throw an ounce into these Rice Krispie Treats. And you're 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 sailing. Exactly. Sailing. <laughs> take me away to where I'm going. So instead of burgers, we basically substitute that with these with these sick, nasty <laughs> weed rice crispy treats. And the patron. And which and is really like I mean like you're you're counteracting, like you're going you you have you've got horses pulling in opposite directions. Yeah. Because if there's one thing that's gonna get you frat boy fucking geeked to, like, yell at people, it's Patron. Right. Right? And then there's, like, the mellow it out of fucking weed brownies. But the, the, the problem was that all it just led to was, like, pregame, everyone in our party was just twisted. So, yeah. I, like, in a way that I didn't, uh, that I normally don't associate with, uh, with football games. So, Justin and I are from South Florida, so we're Steeler fans that were raised in South Florida. We had to hear a whole bunch of shit growing up as kids about how fucking great the Dolphins are when in actuality, Marino sucks dick and they never won a Super Bowl. So yeah. Yeah, I have a lot of pent-up aggression for Dolphin fans giving me shit and some rehashing issues of my childhood. Um, what happens is that the very prototypical Dolphins fan who's like this 55-year-old fucking early retiree in golf pants and a fucking like a, a pink flamingo shirt is like just kicked back in the row behind me, not even really seeming like he's caring about the game too much, m mostly just caring about the fact that I'm standing up in my seat, waving my terrible towel like a lunatic because yeah. I'm fucking twisted on Patron and Rice, Cri Rice Krispie Treat weed things. Well, and, and specifically <clears throat> what you were doing is standing up. Right. His issue was you standing up. That's right. Uh, and so on first downs, uh, <laughs> you would stand up. That's a big four, Big Ben. That's good. That's four yards, baby. Yeah. <laughs> That's a huge four. Huge four. So, so you're, you're, you're kind of doing like a high school coach. Like you're basically, you're, you're up. like I'm pacing. Like, yeah. And, and like 
you're kind of like hunching over during plays. At some point, you don't sit down. Right. Uh, and and really, what you what you have conveniently left out of this story is that he was yelling at you because there was a five year old whose first NFL game was with him. He was taking a child to his first NFL game, and there was a rowdy, twisted Steelers fan yeah. who kept standing up and blocking the vision of the five-year-old because he refused to sit down every time. <laughs> Hines! Good hands, Hines! <laughs> Good hands! <laughs> I think I offered to trade seats with him, though. I said, there let's were fucking no- swap. Yes, okay, but it was in that tone. <laughs> It, it was, was an offer nonetheless. Yes. Uh, so you were very, very, very aggressive. There could not have been two and more. Also, and also you did not want to listen to either me or Rob. Uh, it became a line in the sand between you personally and this guy. Yeah, yeah, it was. And, um, I mean, so there was a standoff. I mean, that's, that's pretty much it. I, I, I didn't get es- uh, escorted out by security or... You know, the guy and I didn't come to blows or anything like that. No, eventually you switched <laughs> seats because we had another kind of row of seats up, uh, up, you know. Yeah, so a really anticlimactic ending to this story. If, from now on, I'm going to tell it that I stabbed him in the butt. <laughs> <laughs> and that's how it ended. But now, no, that would be a, a lesson of what we don't want to have happen. <laughs> to us. To us. The, you know, the, the, we, this is things that we know we cannot pull in Oakland. And that's the thing. So we've, you know, we, we've definitely decided that there's not going to be anything like that. Um, but I do think that we, <laughs> we should bring our fucking shivs ready to, for, so that we can, we can proactively do the butt, butt stabbing. stabbing. Yeah, yeah, yeah. No, I mean, listen, it's... Uh... <laughs> well, you know, there was, so there was this character we came up with at Dragon Con. You ever heard of the author Neil Gaiman? Uh, no, I haven't. All right, well, he's a famous author. He's very, very popular amongst the internet set. And uh, so we came up uh, with a character called Neil Gay Man. <laughs> and he was, yay, talking like this. Hey, it's me, Neil Gay Man. <laughs> and he kind of like, uh, he has like, he has like his kind of call and response, like uh, catchphrase, uh-huh. where it's like, like, hey, like the sad man. Yeah, I fucked him <laughs> in the butt. <laughs> oh. <laughs> So Neil maybe Gay Man. Neil Gay Man, gotcha. uh, and and his whole thing is is maybe it's like maybe yeah I went to the Oakland Coliseum I stabbed a guy in the butt yeah! <laughs> Neil Gay Man ooh <laughs> he's like a my, little Macho Man little Randy Savage ooh, ooh yeah yeah Neil Gay Man <laughs> I do a Slim Jim ooh gay. Uh, <laughs> uh, <laughs> two youngs doing the same character. This is clearly ripping a hole in space. <laughs> uh, all right. So, and I've had my problems at football games before. There was there was a game that you weren't at that I went to last season when when uh, our friends Anthony and and Mike. And you actually have a more the, climactic ending to this. Well, story. I got kicked out. I got kicked out of the stadium, but <laughs> not because I was being belligerent, it's cuz I tried to uh I thought that was exactly why you got kicked out. No, <laughs> no, it was because I uh it had rained during pregame all and right. I was trying to climb over See, no, no. <laughs> no, all right. Let me let me not gloss over it. I was <laughs> shit wasted. Uh that was another pregame thing, although weed was not involved. This time, uh, it was like I was my, my first uh, big tailgate that I, uh, <laughs> I was going to go to. And uh, so I wanted to kind of over prepare. So I brought not only mimosas, but also Bloody Marys. And oh, then we were shit. drinking. So I had like two mimosas, two Bloody Marys, and like seven beers before the game. And it's a classy ass tailgate. It was pretty nice, right? And uh, high society shit. And then, uh, yeah, I was pretty drunk, and then I was trying to climb over seats to get to where uh, my friend, where Mike was, and I slipped, and I just got got called by the guy who was just like, eh, too drunk, yeah. out. <clears throat> so I got tossed, and then I wound up having to like use my. Uh, my charm, because I couldn't get into... Uh, also, it was raining, so we all decided, let's not risk our phones. Let's leave all of our <laughs> phones in the car. 
So I just had to wait until the end of the game and then just walk over to where the car was. So, uh, yeah. That was Remember it. you um, saying that your only salvation was um, some fucking Baltimore Ravens fan that yeah. was out – it's not in the game, just hanging out in the parking lot in the rain like weird ass Baltimore Raven fans do. Yes, <laughs> but he was nice. It was it was a good like like oh Baltimore Ravens fan, I'm wearing a Steelers shirt. Yeah. Should we fight? Hey, yeah. I don't know. Justin Young, how you doing? <laughs> <laughs> uh, so so there we go. That sets the stage. We've had I mean like we, there's been yelling. We've gone to games. I mean because like our entire lives, <clears throat> when you don't grow up in the city for which you root for. You are doomed to a life of visiting stadiums. Exactly. And the one time that we actually, um, well, I mean, we've seen a couple of games in Pittsburgh, but the few times that we have, it's been fucking strange. Yeah. I'm not, I'm not prepared to, you know, just like, I'm like, everyone's cheering at the same time as me. This is, something's wrong. Yeah. No, it's bizarre. <laughs> it's very, very weird. I normally, so I've been conditioned to just like, I, it's, it's enjoyable when the entire stadium is pissed off and angry. That's like the best feeling for live sports. Oh yeah, when when, <laughs> when all the the and everything is really quiet, but then there's always like uh, a good <laughs> contingent of uh, of Steelers fans. Usually anywhere you go, uh, or Pittsburgh fans in general. Pittsburgh fans travel very well. Very and that's well. the other thing that is is kind of preventing me from freaking out about the Oakland game tomorrow is because Steelers fans normally overrun the home team in every single stadium that they play. All I've heard about the Oakland uh, Coliseum is that. Steeler fans are not exactly 50% of the of the audience. Yeah. So, I mean, like, that still means there's going to be a shit ton of Steeler fans there. We're going to find some fucking Steeler fans. We're going to rally around, start some butt stabbing. And we're going to... I mean, we're not, no, we're not going to stab butt. <laughs> there's no butt stabbing. <laughs> well, I'm putting the kibosh on butt stabbing right now. All right, we're moving Enough. on. It's touch and go here, people. It's touch and go. <laughs> By the way, this uh, episode of Jury uh, Saturday brought to you by Lagunitas Daytime, a fractional IPA. There we go. Brewed in Petaluma, California, which is where I record NSFW. That's where the Twit Studio is. Free plug. Lagunitas. When you need a drink during the daytime. (laughs) Hello, friends. It's me, Justin Robert Young. Do you like to escape your problems? <laughs> so definitely the ones that responsibilities that you need to complete during the day. Do I have the escape route for you? <laughs> Hi, friends. <laughs> what I find is kind of ironic is the fact that these beers were kind of fucking expensive. Yeah. Is there, if you're doing daytime drinking, I don't know like how big of a paycheck you're bringing home. <laughs> yeah. But nevertheless, you're gonna need one in order to buy daytime drinking. So. Exactly. <clears throat> it's, I wasn't like. I mean. It was like a buck and change of beer, eight bucks for a six pack. Yeah, it was, yeah. I mean, yeah. Like what? Are, like what fucking how expensive do you want it to be? The fucking cost of living out here in Cali- <laughs> California way. <laughs> <laughs> you got to remember, I come from backwater, fucking middle of the state of Florida now, compared to where you are. I know, <laughs> I know. Um, all right. So, uh, so here, listen. The, you're welcome to the internet, because now a dude thinks. That uh, you're Lebanese, because <laughs> we have. I mean, uh, do you get as much as I do the the ethnic? I uh, actually had ambiguity. I had something that I wanted to talk about that I, I find kind of interesting because I'm pretty sure that the company that I work for in Florida is anti-Semitic. Really? <laughs> Why is that? I'm not gonna I'm not gonna say where I work. Don't but... <laughs> please, for God's sake. <laughs> um, but basically, there's an entire you know like company in Central Florida. And there's not a single Jewish person that works for this, that works for this company. And yeah. I, I'm, uh, I just do I find, they think you're Jewish? They do, but for a specific reason, because I so astutely noticed that there is not a single Jewish employee in the entire uh, Central Florida area. So coming from South Florida, all of our friends were Jewish Pack, growing packed with up. Jews. There's Hasidic Jews lining the streets on Saturdays. So yeah. um, you know. I'm pretty well versed. Well, that's the beat, beat fibers like no Jews in a Florida company. Weird, but like from where we grow up, none but Jews, <laughs> chock full of Jews. So many Jews. Couldn't have if you were to put Broward County in a pinata and then break it, Jews all over the lawn. You'd have your pick of the litter. Up, uh, up, uh, just. It's raining Jews. It's raining Jews. Hallelujah. I mean, it's raining Jews. Hey baby. <laughs> 
newest, um, and the, you know, we should record that parody and fucking sell it to DJs that do bar mitzvahs. <laughs> oh, God, yeah, dude. <laughs> so anyway, so, um, so what I do is I come from, you know, a very Jewish, you know, place in South Florida. Uh, I'm familiar with the Jewish culture. I got a lot of Jewish friends. So I noticed that there's no Jews in this company. So I, I just like, you know, subtly remind people about Jewish things. For instance, like hanging outside of my cube, I have this packet about like the history of Rosh Hashanah. Like, all right. <laughs> <laughs> so you're playing into it. I don't play into it. What I do no, is... No, you I, are. I I'm am. telling you you're playing into <clears throat> yeah, it. Yeah, I am. Yeah. So, so the other day, I just so happened to be having this conversation with one of my coworkers of like, oh, and by the way, do you realize like there's no Jewish people in this company? And she's like stop it. Like, what do you mean? And I'm like, no, there's not. And she's like, but you're Jewish. <laughs> and then that's when I realized I wasn't purposely playing into it. Like, like, uh, older young here was saying, yeah, I, but I was, um, you know, uh, unbeknownst or un, unknowingly, unbeknownst, sure. um, playing do, do into you it. have a mezuzah outside your, uh, your cubicle door? No, but if I had a mezuzah, yeah, I would put one outside of my cubicle. <laughs> <laughs> Just saying internet. <laughs> someone wants to make that happen, we can make it happen. <laughs> and then Justin will live tweet the pics. There we go. Uh, yeah, I think uh, there's, I mean, I don't know. Number one, I don't think there's enough Jews in Northern California. And I'll say that. Because fucking, there's some shit I notice would not be the, would not be the same if there were more Jews in Northern California. Oh, Two things specifically. you talked about this. Bagels. Fucking step your bagel game up, Cali. <laughs> step <laughs> your game up. Import some Jews. Step up the bagel I game. I feel like if there were just a, f a, a few <clears throat> more Jews. A few good Jews. A few good Jews. That's that fucking we, we could solve this bagel thing. Another thing, <laughs> rye bread. The fuck? Are you serious? You cannot fucking like in, in an average supermarket. This is what I'm talking about. An average supermarket, you don't have multiple choices for rye. I'm not even going to ask what the holla situation is like Don't in state. fucking get the fuck out. Of <laughs> you want some holla? <laughs> get out of the state. <laughs> fucking, yeah, go down to L.A. They got Jews in L.A. <laughs> I'm sure you can holla, holla, holla fucking up and down the street. In Northern California, not as much. <clears throat> it's like Zuckerberg and that's it. <laughs> He's like the only one. He ruined it for everyone. They're like, well, that's it. That's the... That's the monopoly on Jews. That guy did everything that a Jew man can do in Northern California, so we're going to greener pastures. Yeah, you know, and, and so, I don't know. I feel like there's, because I come from, you know, a, a Jew-rich area of, of the country. And we I, both do. And that's, you know, people will ask me periodically whether or not I'm Jewish, and I'll just, I'll just say, like, no, but I'm a big fan. <laughs> I just, I'm like, I'm an appreciator of the Jewish culture. I really enjoy it. I like Jewish delis. Big fan. You want to get a little fucking pastrami? <laughs> pastrami on rye? Not Boom! Only, not only that, being raised in South Florida, the Jewish holidays, son. Get out of here. Oh, dude. All day. All, all day. year. All yeah. year. Um, <clears throat> like fucking Yom Kippur. Yom Kippur, Rosh, Rosh Hashanah. Hashanah. So this is a big week. Like now, when, when you're in a... When you're a kid in South Florida, you... Broward County Public School... Fucking, you're doing that dance that, like, oh, da, 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 da. I just kicked the like, mic. Like, yeah, but. you want to have, like, a bar mitzvah, <laughs> fucking a bar mitzvah, like, fucking, it's, it's on. Uh, I mean, that's the other thing. I was like, what, How what, many bar mitzvahs do you think you went to? Well, I was actually, school? I was an uncool kid, and I went to, like, like, in the, in the bar and bot mitzvah game, I was considered yeah. uncool for going to, like, 20 bar mitzvahs. <laughs> <laughs> like, if you, if you were under a hundo then you're fucking, like, you don't have enough, you're not popular enough. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> so I only went to about 20, 25, but I was like, what kind of a fucking culture throws, like, a wedding, per, like, the a party the proportion of, like, most weddings I've been to Yeah. for a goddamn 13-year-old, and it's like... And listen, I don't want to get... <laughs> it's like New York Mets themed and, like, shit. And like <laughs> like Daryl Strawberry's there, like, what the fuck is going on? And I don't want, <laughs> listen, I don't want to get... <clears throat> racist here uh <laughs> but we will but this is like it's like it's like saying like that black guys have big dicks like you know no one's ever like like stop it stop saying black guys have big dicks it's a compliment right yeah of course jews got <clears throat> money like it's like these bar and bar mitzvahs they're not fucking like let's go to chuck e cheese you know like they can be big fucking affairs yeah 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 they're, they're big <clears throat> deals i mean and that was the other thing is Growing up in South Florida, had a few Hispanic friends. 
So I went to one of the the quinceanera. The quinceanera. Uh, yeah. I was I was bored, bored to tears. I was like, this is fucking terrible. Where <laughs> where is Daryl Strawberry? <laughs> <laughs> so you're saying you're saying the fucking you're drawing a line in the sand. I fucking the king says. All right, Vato, fucking good try. <laughs> <laughs> fucking bar bat mitzvahs. Woo! Like, like, let's fucking party. All day, shrimp cocktails. Like. <laughs> <laughs> I'm like, man, so there is no comparison. No, no comparison. you're not doing the shellfish at a bar and bat mitzvah, are you? I don't know. Is that not kosher? I don't think shellfish is like a... I don't remember what the fuck I ate then. I don't know. All hey, <coughs> Jews! Where the Jews at in the chat room? <laughs> Where the Jews at? Uh, fucking shellfish at a bar bat mitzvah, kosher or not. <clears throat> we'll see, uh... Lagunitas break? Are we, are we Lagunitas? Ladies and gentlemen. Hey. Man, I'll tell you what, I don't want to pay my bills. That's why I'm drinking. <laughs> <laughs> daytime Lagunitas. <laughs> the only beer to escape your daytime responsibilities. Uh, alright. <clears throat> uh, I want to talk to you about something. Um, I just got off the road, and there's a few things that I want to do now that I'm back. I'm yep. going to be uh, local for a couple weeks, uh, right. one of which was uh, going to the game with you. But also, there's a project <coughs> that kind of came about a little while ago, and uh, I, I want your opinion on it because you uh, are professionally uh, practiced and educated in sound engineering. That's correct. Um so uh, a while ago, there was a joke um, from uh, from our people are saying gavelta fish, but no, but gavelta that's not fish, shell. Yeah, that's not that's shell. Not shellfish. A uh, fish from a shell. Yeah. <clears throat> uh, all right. So there was a joke that we had on uh, the the show. It was like I think the last show of 2011, where we were going over the Google zeitgeist. Yeah. And we were doing a whole episode, me and Brian, about talking about all the biggest stories of 2011, uh, 2011 according to Google, like okay. what people were searching about. Yeah, yeah. And uh, one of them was Adele. Right. And he didn't know who Adele was. So I was trying to explain to him who Adele was, and it, it, it started with uh, me, you know, going through, uh, <coughs> I, I forget the name, not someone like you. Rolling but, uh, in the Deep? Rolling in the Deep. <coughs> uh, and... I I just well here I'll, I'll show you basically I kind of did a version of the song and then <laughs> fans put together my version of the song a cappella yes. with the actual song so I'll, I'll play for you what it what it was There's a fire burning in my heart do 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 Boodle doodle 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 First impressions to Boodle Deedle Do. Um, it was it was great. Whoever actually cut it together was this like a like a group internet effort or is this one particular editor? Or? I did it on the show. Oh, you did it? No, no, no. I know that you sang no, it. I, and yeah, yeah and, I, and I was and it wasn't the whole thing. I, I didn't like do the whole song. Like I just was like, <laughs> like you know that song like There's a fire, money, <laughs> 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 and then like 
he started laughing, so I kept going. And, <laughs> and so that's why you hear on some tracks. That's why it's so good is because you just – you don't know a word other than the first one. <laughs> yeah. And you just do the whole song. Um, um, all right. So my my impressions? Yeah. I think for – Whoever actually cut it together, I understand that my brother did the acapella rendition, uh, and then someone cut it together to an um, to a uh, instrumental track, and I think that they did a flawless job. Um, you know, there were I, I think that probably as a sound editor, you, like when you don't have all the all the parts of the song, like they just used other parts that didn't belong in that part yeah. of the actual Adele yeah. song. So I noticed that at some certain parts, but still that's just because my brother skipped over some parts and the editor did a fantastic job. Uh, a pleasant amount of reverb. It yes. actually sounded like you sat quite well in the mix. Sure. <clears throat> now, um, a, uh, a guy who we met at Dragon Con, who uh, currently has an album out called Smooth Federation, he does jazz, piano, renditions of Star Trek themes. Mm. It's great. Tasty. Great jazz pianist, right? Yeah. He is like, listen, let's collaborate on an album. I'm going to do all the music. You just do all the boodles. <clears throat> oh, God. For a whole album of Boodle Deedle Do. Oh, man. So good. So good. Uh, and, and so you it's, could just it's do gonna like... Be, it's going to be love songs. <clears throat> like, um... Like call me maybe instead it'll be like bedeedle deedle. <laughs> <laughs> uh, well, I think the two do, do, do. The, the the two that we have definitely is uh, "Baby I Love Your Way" <laughs> by Peter Frampton. So it'll be like uh, you bring it back. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, and then, uh, can you feel the love tonight? <laughs> and boodle do, boodle do, do do. Uh, people are saying, and I think we have to, I have to throw damn is hello by Lionel Richie. Oh God, yes. Boodle. What do you think? You think it, you think uh, it's a strong, strong concept? I think it's a very strong concept. I say the um, the the way that you drive people. I mean, like obviously you would know this better than I would because you have several successful, you know, internet platforms. But sure. I would say that um, you know, making a, a you know like an album with awesome you know classic songs like that. Um, but don't shy away from the top forty and fucking YouTube <laughs> YouTube channel the shit out of it. So you're saying we like we, Justin we Bieber go. boyfriend, but Deedle Deedle do. Yeah, <clears throat> I mean the problem is like you kind of have to have the widest possible knowledge base of the melody, right? Right, which is top forty. Yeah, but like for the audience that we're selling it to, mm. like they might not be <clears throat> up on Bieber, right? Like yeah. how many people? Like I can't, I can't, I don't know immediately the melody to to Justin Bieber's boyfriend. Not to say I couldn't learn it, but like, how many people? Show of hands, yes or no? Do you know the melody to Justin Bieber's song "Boyfriend"? Whether or not you like it, just have you heard it? <clears throat> just, just go ahead and give us a yes or a no. <laughs> um, a whole Beatly Deedly album. It's a million hits guaranteed. Yeah. Um. Then I mean, if that's your if no that's... no no call me maybe, that would be I mean that, that would be that would be something because that's an internet thing like everybody knows call me maybe. I thought that Bieber was an internet thing. That's why I that's that's the only way that I've heard of it. Well, no, because like, uh, call me maybe got famous like like the Friday song got famous like as like a fucking oh my god it's so catchy and everybody fucking keeps playing it over and over again and it's terrible. Like, that's, Except I that's actually, how, um, I actually heard "Call Me Maybe" on on radio stations, and I never heard the Fr the Friday thing was strictly internet. 
Yeah. Or at least that's the way it was in in the bumpkin town that I'm from in Florida. Sure. Uh, Adam Twelve says, I love you, Jerry, but I won't buy a Boodle Deedle album. Sorry. That's fine. I mean, listen, you don't have to. No, I mean... It's really just for the artistic expression. I really, I really don't even to... think that, like, it's going to make any money. Like, it'd be very, very silly to me if it did make money. Uh, <laughs> it was just, like, a very funny... The fact that somebody <clears throat> wanted to do it was funny enough for me to want to do it. You know what I think probably the perfect platform for it um, would be is, like... Um, you know how sometimes you see, like, um, the advertisements for, like, greatest hit CDs yeah. on TV? So you basically put together a video of you selling a, a fictitious CD of your greatest beatly doodly hits. Yeah, I think... So then that way you can just kind of, like, cut Yeah, I think it, it's going to be it's gonna be love songs. I think that's going to be the theme. And it's right. going to be... The title of the album is going to be called Boodle Deedle Devotion. <laughs> and then, uh, like, some... <laughs> an intimate evening of gibberish love songs. <laughs> <laughs> um, <clears throat> the, di- the Diamond Club of the music industry. <laughs> now you know the whole Diamond Club story, right? Yeah, I've been following it. Yeah. I know that you've um, you've uh, actually admitted to never reading the entire thing. Yes, <laughs> on NPR. I did. I did, <laughs> which is true because I still haven't. Uh, I've read about seventy-five percent. No, but I actually what I did was I read the. Um, the Amazon readers review where she was like pissed off that she like bought the book and then like went through and reviewed every single chapter and kind of like, yeah, uh, like, like picked each one apart. Like why would anyone describe their own thighs as alabaster? Yes. <laughs> Which I wrote that line, by the way, <laughs> it's, I wrote alabaster. thighs. <laughs> <clears throat> yeah. That seems like something that you would write. Uh, all right. So real quick housekeeping, uh, DP Owens jr. Uh, says uh, where the DC contributor is going to get free copies of the book. Yes, here's how this is going to work. Uh, we did a pre-order for books because a lot of people wanted physical books. So uh, as soon as we have a handle on how many pre-orders have kind of come in and we have a good round number, we're going to order an appropriate amount. And from that order, the first ones that go out are to contributors. The other thing that we need to do is uh, if you guys can take initiative on collecting addresses, because I know a lot of people, pe- there are people more so than me, John and Brian, who worked on the uh, the collection uh, of, of all the chapters and everything. Uh, if we can make sure that we have a good list of uh, solid addresses, we will send them out, and, uh, and there we go. We also got to figure out how we're going to sign it. I think right now we're leaning toward book plates. What a lot of people do is uh, they'll, like me and Brian would sign like a book plate and put it in there. Uh, and there we go. So if you, uh, I think we're going to offer to have it signed. Although I kind of feel like a sham signing it because like, you know, I wrote one chapter. Brian wrote no chapters. Uh, <laughs> you know, I mean like, yeah, it wouldn't exist if it weren't for us, but like, it's interesting. I don't know. Um, but I don't know. I mean, would you guys, I mean, I think the only reason why we offered to sign is because people said that they wanted it signed. And that's really it. Um, if you wrote a chapter in the Diamond Club and you get that book, fucking sign it yourself. You're the damn author. Yeah. I'm saying to the, the contributors. Yeah. Well, I mean, and that's, yeah, you should, if, if you get the free copy, sign it, you know. I mean, it'd be really funny if we did just do a... <clears throat> We did like a mailing thing, and like everybody mailed, every contributor mailed their copy to another contributor, <laughs> and they just kept getting mailed <laughs> from one to another. And then we just had like the book where everything was signed. Um, so, so there we go. Um, that's that's the the update on that. Okay, the other update is that uh, we have uploaded the new Doctor Who podcast. Uh, we don't have an RSS feed yet. That is still being worked on. However, I do have... Uh, they are uploaded places. So, I'll tell you what. Here's a boodle. <laughs> and uh, I can get you guys the other two so you guys can listen to it. And here's a doodle. Boom. Uh, this is me and Ashley. Uh, we're doing a podcast called Who's the Boss? We talk about Doctor Who. And there we go. Boom. 
Uh, so there, there, you guys, you guys are the first ones to have that. <coughs> uh, we're going to have an RSS feed and hopefully it'll be actually up and ready to download on iTunes. Um, just in time for the show to go off the air, which will be awesome. <laughs> uh, yeah, we were saying there's so many Doctor Who podcasts. Really, I mean, like, there are some projects that are, are like FSL Tonight. Like, you know, we do, me and Tom Merritt uh, have a podcast called FSL Tonight, which is us doing a sports radio show for a league of sports teams made up of science fiction and fantasy movie franchises. Wonderful. So it's like... It's a wonderful idea. The, uh, the Alderaan Alliance <coughs> plays like the Mordor Crow, so it's like Star Wars versus Lord of the Rings, and nice. like, it's basically just us making jokes and references to all those things, but in like the vein of a sports talk radio show. Oh, it's show. brilliant, yeah. I love it, love it. And that's one of those where, like, we don't... I have no expectation on that making any money. Like, I do that <laughs> because I like doing that with Tom, and, and I do the Doctor Who podcast with Ashley because <laughs> I like talking about Doctor Who with Ashley. And, and, and you know, it's just uh, it's just like that. Uh, D.P. Owens Jr., is any idea on uh, next season's teams? Yeah, we talk about all the teams that are going to be in next season on the last episode, the end of this season. Um, and also, um, I don't know whether that made the podcast itself, but, um, I think we're going to do a Kickstarter. We're going to do a Kickstarter for the next season of, uh, of, of FSL tonight, where you guys will have a chance to either buy your own friendly match. So you'd be able to name the two franchises that you would like to see play each other. And we'll do like a 10 minute recap of that friendly match uh, or for like a certain level, we'll do an entire tournament. <coughs> so you can like name four teams that you want to play in this mini tournament uh, wow. and we'll do the two semifinals and the final match. Um, which again, is great because uh, you know, I like doing that and, and it's going to be, it's going to be awesome. Uh, so yeah, we'll have all the details on that, but it, it's it's gonna be you know I was very very encouraged by uh, Tom and our, our friend Scott just did one for another podcast that they call Autopilot, which is really cool. It's okay. basically them reviewing pilots of nice series, okay, uh, and just talking about like how different they are from you know how the show became and mm. yada yada yada. Uh, but they raised like somebody help me out. They I think they raised like fucking. Like nine thousand dollars in like forty eight hours, like it was crazy. I think it's still going. Holy shit! Um, yeah, seventy five hundred in a day, which I don't know if FSL is gonna do that, but like, uh, you know, and really, I don't want it to necessarily. I mean, like, we don't need that kind of money, but like, you know, I, I do think for we have a very small audience, you know, and uh, it's passionate, and I'd rather, I'd rather not fuck around going for advertisers. Like, to be honest, like, you know. I don't know if advertisers don't get us, like, I don't know if, 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 if it just makes sense, like, just yeah. sell to the audience, you know? <clears throat> so, look, there are 20 days left, and they have $8,395 for, you know, I think a podcast that went, what, 12 episodes? Uh, you know, so we'll see. Oh, my God. We'll see where we go. Uh, all right. Uh, I'll tell you what. How about this? <clears throat> How about we finish off? Uh, normally, I'll tell you what, normally, uh, we talk on this show, uh, about politics. Politics, 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 politics. Yeah. Gal is uh, like a racehorse. So that's the politics thing. I play heroine. <laughs> um... But if I should lose her, so let's let's. Uh, I'll tell you what. You are actually in a very very crucial uh, part of the country because uh, obviously uh, Florida is as it always is uh, very very influential. But this year, it's a swinging state. By the polling, it's not uh, it's not South Florida that will be as uh, as influential. It's the I four corridor. It, mm. It's Daytona. Orlando, Tampa, mm -hmm. that is the big, they're, they're the big swing counties. You live in Orlando. Yep. Uh, you've never been, in my 
estimation, an overly political guy. Like, you're not out there going to rallies or anything. Nope. Uh, so you would be a coveted voter for for either and campaign. It, I'm reveling in that right now. Are you? I'm loving it. Now, do you have people in your life that are trying to convince, like, do you feel the pressure in uh, yeah. your, in, in, in where you live? Yeah, 100%. Now, what are what are the what are the arguments that that you hear on a regular basis from either side? Um, coworker of mine is from Europe, okay. and um, he thinks that Romney's trying to um, implement too much religion into the politics. He thinks that um, the fact that he wants to have anything to do with abortions is wrong, and he wants to uh, you know he's he's you know if any woman agrees to vote for him, then she's basically voting to shackle herself and, and chain herself back to the kitchen sure. with a chain just long enough for the bathroom. <laughs> exactly. Uh, uh, and or at the very least, a bucket. <clears throat> right. <laughs> <laughs> um, and, and then there is my, um, my girlfriend's very conservative uh, father, who is a certified financial analyst, and, um, and he you know, is convinced that this is the end of, of America as we know it if Obama is reelected because he won't have a job as well as everyone else in the country who's capable of, you know, um, getting the country out of its economic recession. So he is currently unemployed? No, he's not unemployed. He's a certified financial analyst. He's okay. a CFA, and he, he basically he works with all the, you know, hundreds of thousands of dollars moving around from organizations that are being – you know, so heavily fucking regulated and taxed yeah. that it basically, he's saying that another four years of it will inevitably lead to the end of his industry and that the entire infrastructure of the United States will crumble before us in a fiery... Because ash. already there's a problem with jobs, that we're not, you know, there's not a, there's not a whole lot of jobs in that uh, Obama... He's basically just saying if you keep on fucking regulating and taxing the shit out of, you know, all the people that are making and moving all of the money, then you're just... You're you know, going to ruin an industry. Chopping off the nation yeah. at its knees. And so he is saying, for this reason, very personally, not only am I voting for Romney, but you should vote yeah, for I Romney. I have to vote for Romney. Yes. <laughs> and this is, this is your... This is my girlfriend's dad. Yes. Yeah. Okay. So it would be... Would you say it would be a problem uh, come Thanksgiving if, if it is revealed oh, that you are, that you are an, an, an Obama voter? The thing is that um, he likes me because I can always um, kind of defend my stance on things, even if yeah. they don't necessarily agree with him. Um, it, it still pisses him off to, to high heaven, and I, I, I kind of revel in that a little bit sure. <laughs> as well. But, Just I mean, a little uh, fuck you to the old man. <laughs> <laughs> no, I mean, I really like the guy, and, and I, I definitely I see where he's coming from on a lot of things, because truth be told, I am a swing voter in a swing state, and I'm just waiting to be thoroughly persuaded by one side or the other. And, I mean, you know, I know how this story is going to end, basically. You know, both sides fucking suck, and they're flawed, you know? Yeah. Like, so... Now, now Pete Alhenti is saying, if you vote for Romney, you are literally and directly trying to put my father out of a job. And on the other side, apparently, if you vote for Obama, you are literally and directly looking to put uh, Eric's uh, girlfriend's father out of a job. Exactly. Fathers are, are on the line here. <laughs> We don't know where we're going. And fathers are this nation's backbone. <laughs> backbone. <laughs> Fuck, that movie sucked. I fucking hated that movie. Um, <clears throat> so, uh, where are you? We have a couple weeks to the election. And let, let's, tee this out. let's tease this out a little bit. Okay. Would you, on a scale from 1 to 10, how sure of your vote are you? Right now, like if I'm right punching now, the ballot this very second. How sure, and so how likely to change would your vote be on a scale from one to ten? Oh, one, one being the most swayable, ten being you're fucking locked in. No, I'm totally swayable. <laughs> you're, so you're one. I'm gonna, you're point five. I'm going to figure it out as I'm like, like moonwalking into the fucking ballot. I'm just going to like poof, throw the cape to the side like Rick J fucking uh, James Brown style yeah. and... <laughs> and, and, gotta vote now. <laughs> gonna punch the ballot. Gonna make the president. <laughs> so that's gonna happen, and that's that's Got electoral college. <laughs> <laughs> I take him to the bridge. I bump, 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 bump. <laughs> that's how I'm gonna punch it too. I'm gonna go. Bump, 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 bump. <laughs> Florida guy. <laughs> 
gonna be me. It's gonna be me in the fucking <laughs> in the ballot. It's gonna be I don't know why, but I'm just gonna go all James Brown on it. And that's how swearable I am. And it's not that I don't take the presidential election seriously. Um, I just I, I I do think that it's kind of it. okay. All right, here, yeah, real quick. <clears throat> Call me DJM Beef Piper. Both say uh, Bill Maher had some good comments about swing voters last night that uh, calling them out for not giving a shit. Uh, I haven't seen what Bill Maher said. I, I will take a guess that I know what Bill Maher said. And I will say, fuck that. Listen, fucking people who are for one side that tell people, like, how to vote or how to think about voting is the dumbest thing ever. Like, you are for a side. Your goal is not to get people to vote. It's not to educate people. It's to get people to vote like you. So it's like, if you are, and I've, I've said this before, don't vote. If you don't want to vote, don't vote. If you want yeah. to wait until the last second to fucking <laughs> vote, then fucking wait until the last second to vote. Don't let anybody who's on a side tell you that you're not caring about the country or that you are somehow less than or an idiot for fucking not being on their side. Like, that's just, it, 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 that, that infuriates me when it's, when it's hidden in the, the guise of you're not a good person. Yeah. Like, for not voting like me. And that it's not just, hey, listen, I'm for Vilmar. Just he donated a fucking what a million dollars to Obama. Like he's an Obama guy. Like he is. When you watch his show, he's proselytizing you to vote for Obama because he very much believes it. And that's his right. Good for him. Yeah. Like <clears throat> you know that's that's what he does. So don't just fucking like. But what annoys me is when it's under the like. Well, you you got to get out to vote. You know, you gotta you gotta really get out there and vote. It's like no, they don't want you to get out and vote. They want you to vote for, for his guy. Yeah, of course. All right. Um. Yeah. So I mean, uh, obviously I and be only the ignorant would still be undecided. No, I don't think so. I think there's plenty of reasons to be fucking undecided because I think both campaigns are not particularly being run very well. Yeah. I mean, that's the, that's really the problem. Like I said, I mean, I'm I'm waiting to be thoroughly persuaded, and and I'm I'm you know I open conversations. Uh, or, you know, I, I speak openly with uh, people that are on both sides in hopes of actually being thoroughly swayed. I think that that would be a great position to be in because I do care about this country and anyone that lives here does. I mean, like, no matter which side you're for, everyone wants the fucking country that they live in to be prosperous and for their own lives to be more prosperous and that of their families. So, I mean, um, I, uh, I, I, I want to be presented with a with a you know a candidate that I really like. Unfortunately, that much or a case for I, any of the candidates hasn't been. So that's well, all right. So B Viber says they've been campaigning for over two years. Well, not a lot of people pay attention to shit. You know, like until <laughs> fucking like I mean, they got lives. They got lives to deal with, and and you know they're political junkies like me. I fucking followed everything that everybody said fucking forever because I really really like this stuff. But like. A lot of people just don't. I mean, and, and, and you know, also the, the facts on the ground change. You know, like if you were a guy, let's say theoretically, and you were very, very much a, an Obama guy and you believed part of what you believed is because you were dissatisfied with how Bush handled foreign policy <coughs> and you were happy with how Obama handled foreign policy. And that was very, very important to you that you didn't like the wars of the Bush administration. You like what Obama said in 08, you voted for Obama, and now you look at the fact that, you know, we're still in Afghanistan, more people have been dead in Afghanistan over the last four years than were in the previous eight years. Yeah. There's fucking, you know, people, <coughs> the first ambassador got killed since fucking Carter. Uh, <laughs> you know, like, you might all of a sudden be like, well, I don't feel so good about this guy, you know, or if, let's say, on the other side, you, uh, you know, well, I, I don't know. I mean, I, I don't know why, what you would think about Romney that would have disappointed you about Romney at, at this point. But, you know, I think that there's there's plenty of reasons why you should be able to change your vote. Yeah. Yeah. I, I mean, um, that's the thing. I'm just um, haven't really been convinced of anything at this point. And um, I want to be. I actively seek that information. And, um, you know, it, it it's just it doesn't really um, I mean neither candidate is perfect and uh, I think that that's the reason why kind of a, a two party system that we've uh, really kind of like forced ourselves into as a nation is just fucked uh, I think we like to we like to pick this or that and that in my opinion I think that that's lazy I think that you know that you know as a political system 
doesn't work because you know if you I mean if you take a look at all the issues on the Republican side even if you're voting for Romney chances are you're not going to agree with every single part of that particular candidate's policy and you know that's where I have a moral objection to choosing this or that yeah all right real quick uh, what do the ambassador being killed have to do with Obama number one <coughs> if Obama wants to be fucking I personally killed Osama bin Laden uh, you know then he has to also be he has to take credit for the fact that this dude fucking died on 9-11 in a fucking organized terrorist attack on the fucking 11th anniversary of 9-11. And then they all pretended that it was because of this fucking video, uh, you know, for, for two weeks. Before that was, you know, kind of, they've, they've now walked that back a little bit. You know, it, it's like the economy, you know. You can have some effect on it, but it's like if something happens that has not happened in a very, very, very long time... Then you're going to get criticized for it, and, and you should get criticized for it. Mm -hmm. Like, the presidency is the hardest job on the planet. Very, very hard. Uh, but, like, part of that is, you know, I think it's your job. It's, you know, the, like Teddy Roosevelt said, the buck stops here. Everybody else can blame everybody else. But fucking the buck stops with the president. Mm -hmm. You know, and, and that's just, just the case. And, and, you know, politically, I think it is a factor. It is, it is something that, that, should be, that should be brought up. Anyway, um, <laughs> Glenn Beck said that uh, Ambassador Villarat Eve's online gaming was a CIA front. Well, I mean, you know, it's Glenn Beck, man. <laughs> <laughs> what are you going to do? Uh, the American president has little to do with control what happens in the country and mostly falls uh, to Congress. Well, I mean, listen, there's checks and balances, but working with Congress is part of the president's job. You know, so it's like, I don't know. To me, I kind of think that, I don't know. Uh, I, I have a problem with the kind of hero worship uh, with the presidency in general, like no matter who's in, in, in charge. Like, and I think it's, it's, it's disheartening to me that a lot of people that are very, very skeptical people just kind of put that in a box and away, you know, during political season sometimes uh, because they – they get so worked up of like, I'm wearing a blue shirt. You're wearing a red shirt. Right. Fuck you, red shirts. Fuck you, blue shirts. Right. Like really practical people will forget that the position of the president is almost an impractical one itself, you know? And <laughs> there's really only so much influence that, you know, this one person is going to have on, you know, the state of the world, which invariably America has to play in right now, and they have the biggest influence in, so. Okay, so so let's get back to you as, as the very influential voter that you are. The swing voter in the swing you state. Are, you are, no matter what side you're on, Yeah. you're, you're tenuously there. Yeah. Where would you say you are right now, and, and well, you know, let's tease it out even more. Got it. What is your biggest issue? What is the issue you would consider yourself voting on? Uh, it's a good question. Uh, I'm a big foreign policy guy. Okay. Yeah. So what what are what specifically what foreign policy issues are you concerned about? Um, Iran, China, and uh, Israel. So you would say our relationships and handling of those three <laughs> countries specifically, which are three very different problems. Mm -hmm. uh, China, of course, is a a tenuous ally, specifically financially. Yeah. Uh, and, and economically, but obviously we, it's a wary kind of thing. Yeah. Uh, Russia is always going to be a a very tenuous situation, and Israel is something that Obama will probably be the weakest on, uh, yeah. considering how uh, how that that relationship, the relationship with Netanyahu specifically, no matter what you think of Netanyahu, they have not seemed to see eye to eye. Right. And and just as a as a. Um I don't know if you if you meant to say this, but uh, my second country was Iran. You said Russia. I know Russia has to do oh, okay. with Iran. Sure, sure, sure. Okay, <laughs> Iran. So Iran getting nuclear missiles, and and Iran and Israel are kind of much of the same problems because if Israel's going to go to war, it's going to be with Iran. Yeah. Right now. Yeah. Um. So all right. So that's your that is the the issue that you would be voting on if you are on one side or another. Which side are you on? And then bear bear with us, everybody. That it is it is tenuous. It could flip. So he doesn't feel like either are doing a great job. One is doing a slightly better job in his mind. If you had to vote right now... On foreign policy strictly? On foreign policy. Who are you voting for, understanding that it's tenuous? All I'm going to say is that by doing... 
by just looking at Romney's campaign page and where he stands on foreign policy issues, yeah. I'm not stoked about it. Okay. I'm not stoked about several things. Like, I mean, if you go and visit his website right now and check out how he plans to deal with China in the next couple of years, that involves actually supplying weapons to smaller nations like Taiwan so that they can... Which we, which we always have done. Right, right. But, I mean, just in general, like militarizing, uh, you know, the, um, the South Pacific... So that well, we, we can like yeah I mean, we've we've I mean uh, like we gave Taiwan the Aegis system uh, Clinton did you know back in the back in the mid 90s we've we we have a, a long history of supporting the independent Republic of Taiwan which China says is China uh, but that that's something that we have done for for a very long time anyway well I guess um, you know <sighs> fucking that. I mean, I, I don't really know if that's going to be something that I think is is a good idea. A good idea, forward, or has been a good idea, or up has been now. a good yeah. I, idea in the past. Yeah. Um, I'm not going to lie; I don't really know exactly what Obama has done in regards to that. Um, I I just don't necessarily think that we're in a position as a country right now to be beefing up other countries' militaries because we're economically um, scared of China. I think that, you know, wars aren't necessarily waged with fucking Apache helicopters anymore, that wages are clearly, or excuse me, uh, wars are clearly waged economically, mm -hmm. and China's winning that war. So let's fucking focus on, you know, improving economically and, you know, at least establishing something, you know, so that we're not, you know, pissing off China too much that, because they're a huge economic threat. You know, so I you mean, would like, say that, that the best, our, <clears throat> our best events against... China is a strong economy. Right, yeah. I mean, because that's why we're fucking frightened uh, to shit about them right now is because, I mean, yeah, they have a they, huge they have, military. They, and they have an ascendant they have the, economy. They have a, a skyrocketing economy over the yeah. last 10 years. So, I mean, that's that's scaring the shit out of us. And we're saying, oh, your economy is so good. Let's, you know, beef up militarily. Like, that's that's just the wrong way to wage that battle, in my opinion. So I would, uh, and if I were to lead you in the conversation as as hesitant as you are with Romney's position on China, mm -hmm. I would guess that you are probably equally as hesitant with Obama's handling of Iran and Israel. Yeah. I don't know as much about that. Um, I just know that, uh, you know, Obama is kind of like fucking just sort of disattached uh, himself from Israel, and I don't know that that's necessarily a good thing either, because Israel's, Israel's good, in my opinion. We talked about, mm -hmm. you know, our upbringing in South Florida. Love the Jews. We're big fans. Huge, huge Jews, guys. <laughs> so, I mean, you know, that's that's the reason why it kind of frustrates me that I have to pick this or that is yeah. because, you know, I don't really like either of what I'm hearing. And um, I do care about the nation. And, I and you know, I obviously don't want us to, uh, you know, be terrorized. I don't want to see our economy fucking... Uh, continue to deteriorate, and yeah. I, I, you know, I want to raise children in this nation, being the best in the world. So, I mean, this fucking means a lot to me. But um, unfortunately, so would you say? All right, it looks like you have. I mean, I can understand why it's a tenuous yeah. thing right now. But yeah. if you had to vote, we'll, we'll, we'll be done teasing it out. If you had to vote right now, who would you vote for? Might have to go third party. Third party, really? So you couldn't, you couldn't. Uh, and I would, I would think, who would that actually be a vote for? Like, who is your Democrat? I mean, it's obviously, it's, would, I'm, would, I'm not voting for Romney because I'm considering voting for Romney. Because you would theoretically be an Obama voter demographically. So if you voted third party, right, that is a lost vote for Obama more so than it is no, I a lost vote for Romney. Um, yeah, I guess, yeah, yeah, yeah. You can make by a your, case by your By your age demographic. I should be voting Obama. You should be voting, like, he would be counting on your vote right. in, in your county. Uh, whereas there are other parts, especially where you live, that's more of a Democratic base than like other parts of, you know, like than Christmas, Florida, <laughs> which is probably going to be far more of a Romney. You don't know about Christmas. Google that shit. Fuck you if you don't like Christmas. <laughs> <laughs> um, yeah, so I never really thought of it that way. I, I um, you know, when I'm when I'm talking with the um, with my girlfriend's dad, the staunch Republican, uh, he he views it as you know a, not a vote for Romney, so that is going to assist Obama in the long run. Um, but no, that's you an would interesting be, way to portray it actually. You would be like, if you voted for Romney, yeah, that would almost be like like a, a pick six. Exactly. Like you would not only be taking, there'd be a pick six in the end zone. It'd be like not only would you be taking away 
I vote Obama. 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 Yeah, but I'm also but putting points on the board you're for putting, Romney. You're going yeah. fucking Dion. <laughs> <laughs> high Watch seven. Watch my lagerita. Exactly. Uh, yeah, you're going the other way. Right, right. So um, I, I think that just based on the – I mean, if I'm going to go with, like, the utilitarian approach, and I'm just going to say that – the, the candidate with the most amount of things that I agree with, not necessarily saying that it's going to be my biggest issues or that I agree with all the issues um, that, you know, I don't see eye to eye with that candidate on. If I just go purely on, you know, the numerical value of issues that I agree with, unfortunately right now it's a third-party candidate. Oh, but who? Gary Johnson. Libertarian. Libertarian. Which is why I have such a difficult time, um, you know, really rationalizing a vote for Obama because – um, I I think we got to scale back government. Yeah. Just don't necessarily agree with um, doing that via Romney's other issues. Yeah. Well, and the Republican Party. I mean, if you look at, you know, uh, under Bush, you know, we expanded government not at the rate that we have expanded government under Obama, but right. <clears throat> uh, or that we'll continue to expand government. Sure. Yeah. Um, in the next four. <laughs> Eric is Ron Swanson. Is that Parks and Recreation? That is Parks and Rec, and actually, that's part of the reason why I've <laughs> I've grown so fond of that show. <laughs> Ron Swanson, I think, is probably just the most well-constructed character in television. Are you familiar with this guy's? I've yes, I've. He's I've, the libertarian that works for the government purposefully so that he can destroy the government. Oh, really? <laughs> <laughs> and like, so he hates the government. He gets a government job, and then he winds up getting promoted to manager of this particular <laughs> branch. <laughs> so what he does is he hires the most inept people so that he can continue to destroy the government. But um, gotcha. Molly, what's her, her um, uh, Amy Poehler. Amy Poehler's character. Yeah. She's like just amazing at what she does. So she continues to stifle him. Ah, uh, okay. Yeah, so it's great. It's so there we go. <laughs> uh, all right. So that that is the the politics discussion. I think uh, I've said uh, that um, you know each each week I'll talk more about. Where I'm at on, uh, on on political stuff, I think that well, the conversation that me and Eric had about uh, uh, about foreign policy uh, to take that you know a little bit a little bit further, I, I I think I have I have a lot of concerns about where uh, number one how we've handled the the Arab Spring uh, and I don't know, there was a really there was a big article. Got a lot of um, a lot of uh, a lot of press. Uh, Michael Lewis, who I love, great author, wrote <coughs> Moneyball, The Blind Side, yeah. The Big Short, uh, great, probably the best in the game when it comes to nonfiction stuff. Uh, wrote a big Vanity Fair article about Obama and, and got just tremendous access. You know, was with him for a very very long time um, and got a lot out of him. But, you know, there's a whole thing about the Arab Spring and specifically the Libyan uprising uh, that I was really unsettled by. I was, I was really, you know, it was portrayed because Michael Lewis is in the tank for Obama in this article. And in general, Michael Lewis's stuff, he tends to kind of make heroes out of the people that give him a lot of access. Like Billy Bean in Moneyball is not only just a baseball, a smart baseball general manager, he's fucking changing the paradigm of decision-making in general, you know, like... And so it's like that with Obama, that, you know, there's... It's not a fair piece, you know, like, he takes shots at Romney, he makes Obama to be <coughs> the greatest fucking, you know, most intelligent president in the history of the planet. Yeah. But there's a point where, you know, they, they portray... He portrays Obama as kind of this outside-the-box thinker when he's talking about... Libya, and he's he's asking all these under uh, you know like staffers about like what they think uh, you know what they should do about Libya. Yeah, and it bothered me. It bothered me that like we're we're at that point. We're at the eve of destruction in Libya, and like we don't have an underlying idea of what we want to happen, and that we're not formulating policy on achieving that goal. That we're that we're at a point where it's like, well, what should we do in Libya? <laughs> like, you know, and, and like that to me was like, I think that the the way that we best work <coughs> in foreign policy situation is by providing consistent leadership. You know, 
And uh, it's funny. Uh, Call Me DJM said, I'd rather have The Decider. And that's uh, – Obama's talked a lot about fucking how much if – if there's one thing he agrees with George W. Bush, it's that the president is the decider. Yeah. Uh, but I think, you know, when we don't have an idea going in, like, I, I think we have to – like, there, there's a fallacy, I believe, that um, – there's a fallacy to the idea that no action for in American foreign policy is, is just no action. action. Uh, or, or is just no action. Okay. Like, it's just like that we can just sit out of <clears throat> no, things. No, yeah, because that's an action we in can't. itself. Yeah. No action is an action. I talked about this a lot last week. Um, you have to forego the idea of isolationism, which unfortunately is one of the things that made this country great in the first place. It's sad. Yeah. Um, so I think that I, I agree with you. I think foreign policy is a major issue for me specifically. Um, you know, I, I, in the last couple of weeks, have seen, uh, and I, it's unfair because what Obama says is as the president, what Romney says is as a candidate. Um, but like when Obama said that he doesn't know whether or not Egypt is an ally or an enemy and then had to fucking walk that back, like, that bothers me. <laughs> yeah. That bothers me a lot. We should fucking know whether or not Egypt is an ally or an enemy, no matter what happens in Egypt. You know? Um, I mean, it's in a kind of turbulent time in its nation's history right now, though. I mean, well, yeah. A lot of but like, we, I mean, it could go a bunch of different directions. That's what I'm saying. But we should be taking <clears throat> proactive like, steps. Yes. Yeah. Like, we should be treating them like that. And by the way, Me Too also says, our libertarians isolationist. The Libertarian Party is. Uh, and Gary Johnson is but far more isolationist yeah, than it's either of the two candidates. Uh, which, which um, again, you know, I mean, like, you kind of have to. Unfortunately, you kind of have to go on um, ha, uh, the uh, most number of issues that you agree with. And that might not necessarily be your big ticket issue, though. So, I mean, he's not necessarily my guy either. Yeah, uh, <laughs> and that's you know, that's people you know, like let, let other countries deal with their own problems. Like, can't. We can't. It, it's it's like imagine the world is a block. Right? A yeah. block of houses. Yeah. We live on the biggest house at the end of the block. We have all the guns. Or we have the most and the best guns. We can solve problems like that. Oh. There's a house at the end of the block. We're all on the same block. And we can hear not uh, the, the, the husband beating the shit out of the wife. More so, the kids come over to our house and say... My dad is beating the shit out of my mom. Can you please stop them? You have the way you can do it like that. If we don't do it, we're not the, we're not just the guys who live in our own house. Uh, we are uh, we're the people that didn't do it. Yeah, it's um, it's like saying that you've um, you know you've still made a decision by not making a choice. Yeah, and okay, so people are saying call the cops. Let's take that scenario into an old west town where there are no cops <laughs> or where let's say where the sheriff like fuck it, it's it's like there's no overarching force that can just be called in and take care of stuff right like we're organizing stuff on a global community uh so there we go uh you know and, and so I, I i was very unsettled by by kind of what's happened um you know would, would the un be the cops yeah and how good are they like <laughs> You know, uh, and by the way, the UN is us. We fucking, we just put our own forces into other people's uniforms. So it's like, and, and the UN is like the cops if the fucking guy who's beating his wife got a say. Like, fucking Iran gets a say on what the UN does. When the UN gets together, <coughs> like, it's, it's, uh, it's, it's terrible. You know, if you look at something <laughs> that comes out of the UN, like, it's just, a lot of it's just fucking anti-Semitic drivel. Um... So there we go. I, 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 you know, do I think that Romney would do a better job foreign policy wise? I, I, I haven't heard what I would like to hear out of Romney on that. When I, and I said this last week, I thought that the Arab Spring gave us a great opportunity to say we deal with democracies. Anybody who's not a democracy, we deal with differently. And so that means Russia, you're on notice. China, we deal with you differently. Uh, and all these Arab countries, if you can hold free and fair elections, and, you know, we will talk to you differently. And so that's that would be an across-the-board 
kind of thing. Uh, and, and I don't think that we did that. I think that we just said, hey, let us know what happens, guys. <laughs> uh, you mean in the last four years, or you're saying that that's what... The last were, four years. Yeah. 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 You know, and, and, and I don't... You, know, you were talking I, about how you, you didn't hear what you necessarily wanted to out of Romney's campaign. Well, because I haven't heard that. I haven't heard that, you That know, we're going to deal with democracies, that we're, only. Yeah, that we want to deal with democracies, and we want to work with these countries, uh, you know, to... Um, uh, Huxley, what's to say democracy is so superior? Uh, I think, uh, you know, call me crazy. The proof is in the pudding. Call me crazy, but fucking that's that's what I believe. You know, <laughs> and, and you can you can say that's wrong. You can say that's not good. You can say that I am misguided in saying that democracy is superior. I believe that representative government, trying and and even striving to representative government is good. It's, or better than the alternative. Yes. I, I believe that very much so, yeah. and and even if it's even if it's imperfect, I mean, striving toward that goal. Even is, domestically, is a, I mean, a lot of people say that our representative democracy is a sham, or that it doesn't work, or that your vote doesn't really count, or something like that. It's like I'll fucking take this any day over the alternative. Are you joking? Like rather than just like a family of of dictators just like continuing to, uh, you know, just run shit. Well, that and, and not you know, interested. I'll, I'll, I also think that you know when you have representative democracy, you 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 are more likely to have people be invested in their country, and being people being invested in their country is good for the local economy. And here's a fun fact: no country, no two countries that have traded with each other through a free market economic economy have ever gone to war. Ooh. Two independent countries that have traded with each other through a free market economy have ever gone to war because it's because there's too much at stake. You have you know when what you about the United States and Britain? We were a colony. We were not a different country. All right. Yeah, and then we were allies in World War Two. Yeah. Yeah. And they were not you know uh, the 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 countries in World War Two had state run economies. Did we ever trade with France after the revolution? Well, France was an ally during the revolution. Right, and then we fought them promptly thereafter. Yeah. Let me just so laughs. <laughs>, <laughs> it was a ball. <laughs> <laughs> uh, all right, guys. Well, that all wraps it up. Uh, Australia and the UK. Well, uh, maybe, it's, maybe it's non-colonial. I know that it's far less likely. At <laughs> Fact check the shit out of this bitch. Yeah, you're right. Yell at me. Uh, all right, guys. We're going to wrap it up here. Uh, thank you guys so much for hanging out with us. Uh, this is Eric. Where can you – I mean, I don't, know. I don't know. If you want to plug anything. Do you, uh, have, you can you can check. Well, you have the band, right? Um, well, just check out uh, some of my music. Uh, just search for Eric Young uh, or Padre Bacon 68 on yeah. YouTube. Afghanistan is a state-run economy, by the way. Yeah. And, uh, what did I write? And uh, yeah, so we can uh, we can always do that. <clears throat> uh, so there we go. All right, I mean you're on Twitter, but you're not like on Twitter. No. <laughs> um, so there we go. All right, guys. Nice to meet everybody out there. Cheers. Uh, we're gonna I think we're gonna go to a Giants game, and uh, I will talk to you guys later. Until next week, ladies and gentlemen. Please don't die.